Guys, thank you once again. Here's the part three of our Mike Mayhew uh, special, I guess you call it. Uh, he's joined us for one final episode. He's chosen the third category for us. Um, it should be exciting. Uh, we were talking just before this, and we're, we're a little excited and also going, oh, crap, do I have the right books or not? But this is pretty <laughs> funny. This is CBSI. Uh, check us out. Read our articles and go to comicbookinvest.com. And, of course, go to mikemayhewstudio.com as well, and we'll talk about that in a bit. Uh, but let's see what our category is, and let's talk a little bit about it. You got it, Peter? Yeah, so I was getting ready right now. All right, so I'm going to share this for our little game. One, two, three. And once again, the guest chooses. All right, so I did center, left, let's, this time let's do right. Okay. <laughs> All right, <laughs> Marilla, what you got? He's trying to go for the hat trick. I'm going center again. <laughs> okay, I get what's left. You told him ahead of time. I didn't. <laughs> Process of deduction. He did what? I picked right. one each. I do like that. Just to comment on that cover. That's the first uh, African American superhero, I believe, or cover on the on the cover. So that's a cool oh, book, and okay. just in general. Uh, that, is that why you chose that one, Peter? For our... yeah, yeah. It, I think ne hearing Nico talk about this on uh, on something, it, it struck in my head, and I didn't have it, so I knew I wasn't spoiling one of my picks. So, yeah. <laughs> man, you screwed me. Oh. <laughs> Well, if I did, then I did. <laughs> All right. No, I don't, I don't here, one. I'd like got. one now, though. Book number one is? Hold on. I mean, I got to switch up, switch gears to get this display up. Now, minimize. Oh, got so it. Talk a little longer. There we go. Ooh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, so that's my first pick, uh, man. Jim Steranko, uh, maybe one of my favorite Jim Steranko covers. I, I mean, you know, a, there's a lot of great um, sort of a what do you call that? A showdown, a gunfight sort of covers. Mm, yeah, that one man, with with the drama of the dead hand and the girl and the, the smoke and even the look on the guy's face and everything. And man, it's just got it all. I just I adore that cover. I'm a, I'm a huge you know, one of my first books we talked about in one of the other episodes was Zorro. And I purposely chose that for the challenge of having to draw horses and period things. And wow. I just absolutely fell in love with Westerns as a result of, of working on that book. And um, I just have so much admiration for Western fiction and artwork. And uh, comics uh, definitely knows how to handle Westerns well. Yeah, you could have used this for the talking one, too. There you go. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very nice. Double duty. All right. Well, we're keeping the same rotation then. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start with my my modern. I I had to I had to punt a little bit this week because I'm not a Western collector, so I didn't have a lot of good stuff in my boxes. I felt a little out of my league, but I did manage to find a couple of things, and I went with Spawn Gunslinger um, um, as a sort of Western uh, Western inspired cover. A great Capullo cover. This is, I think. In my opinion, this is the better of the two gunslingers. Um, I, I, only that. I, I, only, I only have this one. Uh, I don't have the other one, but just a great, great cover. Um, clearly not a Western, but still uh, inspired by Westerns. So That's a cool cover. You know, I just, I feel like I just saw that Spawn character uh, on a tease Todd put up on Instagram. It almost seemed like a Spawn verse sort of thing. Yeah, yeah he, he, that one back. Yeah. yeah is uh, I think a couple issues later, I did World War One Spawn. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yes. That's the yes. only issue you did, right? You just did the yes. one issue? Interiors so I'm there? I mm -hmm. see, I, I'm hoping I see World War One Spawn in the Spawn verse. <laughs> <laughs> so did you create him or did Todd ask you to create him? I mean, you, you know, the writer, David Hine, it was kind of a fill-in issue to let the regular artists catch up. Um, so the writer came up with it as sort of a, something out of the regular time thing and mm -hmm. they, they were playing with these different spawns through time and yeah i came up with the costume design and todd approved it and this or that that's yeah. cool yeah i mean yeah I was, that was one of the things when we doing the like research about okay what what has mayhew done i was like he did a spawn issue I yeah mean, I, I have it in a box i was gonna pull it out but i decided to stick with the mystique for, oh, for nice. that, be, uh, that page well it's this one right here. That's an that's a page from that spawn issue. It's oh, hard to nice. see. It's uh, him with a big gun mm -hmm. and a tank. I don't know, let me see. Yeah, it's hard to see that one right there. 
Yeah. Hey, I, lo- I love that issue so much. I've got one of the pages hanging in my office. <laughs> I think you posted some of that on your Instagram recently because I was going through your stuff. And I was like, hey, there's That's some right. inside spawn. Yeah. Uh, Very happy to have done some spawn stuff. I just, I, I adore Todd since I was, got in the business and uh, he's just one of the, the leaders of our industry and uh, it's, an, it's an amazing achievement that he's done. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, Peter, oh, what you got? I'm nine up. issues now. I'm up. Uh, this one, I actually just happened to find in a dollar bin box today. <laughs> or when we filmed this two weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> but this is uh, Spider-Verse 4. Which oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Web slinger. Yeah. Gunfighter. So it just, yeah, it's got a little miles down there in the corner, too. I was like, oh, what the heck? I could use this. <laughs> That's a new one on me too. I didn't know about Web Slinger. And then who who did that artwork? That one, I think this was uh Dave Raposa. I don't know if I'm saying his name correctly. That's beautiful. I didn't know anything else that he's done, but I had to look it up because I was like, I don't know who did this art. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was sort of the that little series is not not epic. Like the edge of the Spider Verse the first time was a great st- series with uh Dan Slot did the writing or whatever on it. And then they keep trying to reproduce it. It's not quite as good. Spider Geddon, Spider Verse. Uh, <laughs> they they keep recreating these new characters because they know it sells. People go crazy because they want the first characters and everything like that. Like I think this was I'm written sure by that. the SNL guy. Hmm? Taron Killam wrote this. You know the oh. SNL guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We'll be smaller the guy. Yeah. All right. So for you're so up. For you're my up. Knicks, this is one of those. I, you were talking about being during the pandemic and all that. And the initial stages, you get bored. So I started watching these Facebook auctions and this one random one that was in West Virginia, I ended up catching it and uh, they threw up these books. I was like, Oh, these are badass covers. I'm going to get them gunfighters in hell. Oh. <laughs> they're, 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 these great covers. And I, he, and I he made the mistake of, okay. He said like $10 for the lot. I was like, okay, that's so bad. I'll, I'll go for them. Didn't realize they sell for like a dollar a piece on eBay. And I started taking <laughs> to the cleaners. Check out that one. Um, this oh, is great. A great cool. skull. But I didn't realize these were for adults. These are like, I can't show this because we have kids that might watch this. Like um, Mike, your daughter might watch this. So we're not going to show yeah. the interiors. Uh, yeah. These are definitely a uh, rated X on the inside. Oh, uh, all, all black and white. It, I mean, I guess if I could have seen the warning <laughs> not for youngins, I would have known better. <laughs> I didn't know it's one of those indie comics, but these the covers I do actually like. So I, I'm not like upset over them as much. It was just sort of disappointed. But when you said Western, I was like, this is sort of an oddball pick. I'll go with these. You got the nice Colt West Colt uh, revolvers, the satanic symbols, and then oh, that's cool. a skull coal. <laughs> uh, this is a five part series, but it's actually a gatefold cover. I just can't show you the rest of it because it's uh, not for youngins. So. Yeah, yeah, it's like vigil <laughs> druid or something. Yeah, I was gonna say <laughs> just the not for young is doesn't mean that it could have just been a just a pilgrim. There's you know excessive violence in there. You yeah. didn't no, know it, it, there's mm-hmm. definitely some um, yeah pillaging. Uh, <laughs> so. Okay, vigil is awesome by the way. Like yeah. he, he's an interesting character. Very nice. All right, so what we got book two? Yes, we got book two. Book two. Okay. And the stream, book two. Oh. Ooh, I like the reflection in the water. That is a cool cover. Let's see. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, that one, man, I don't know. Something about that cover really captures my imagination. Uh, I mean, Gil Kane is just one of the all-time greats up there with Jack Kirby. And he, if you look at his covers on this uh, Kid Cole, Rawhide Kid sort of run from the 70s, they're just – phenomenal all of them the storytelling but this one in particular i don't know it's uh it's just he's so doomed right there and and yet Mm -hmm. he's feral and um like you say the reflection the water and the line worker on the sunshine it's just such a provocative cover i love that yeah i I, I don't know where i first saw that and it burned in my brain but it it must have been in the back of an old marvel magazine or something Mm. as a kid but it just i've always remembered that cover I mean, I think that's where your Vampirella inspiration comes from, the reflection and everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's I, I'm, that's cool. I don't, I don't think I've ever seen that. I don't know. This one's not familiar to me. 
but it's it's better than the ones I had sitting around <laughs> my kid Colts and yeah. I, I had about three of those Gil Kane covers that I was looking at, and I, I settled on this one just because it's so out of the, it's so different, you know, from from a typical cover. Yeah, it is because again, just go just going a little closer on like in the eyes, it's just the look. Oh, that face, oh, so Anthony. Yeah, and you know he's kind of in an odd position. It's it's not in a typical hero stance or anything like that. You know, it's uh, I love it. All kinds of foreshortening. Yeah, yeah. He's just defiant. Like he's got you know at least three guns on him, and he's just still. Yeah, I'm not worried about him there. I think he's gonna <laughs> figure it out. <laughs> oh, very nice. That's really cool. All right, Mr. Morello, what you got? Oh yeah. All right, so I, I also. I also went with sort of Marvel Western as well, but a slightly different direction. I went with Western Ghost Rider. Uh, so this is the number one. This is uh, a Dick Ayers cover. Um, I, I love this little series. I know that it's sort of the red-headed stepchild of Ghost Rider books. Um, sure. Obviously, we, we all think of the, the, the hellion with chains and flaming skulls and stuff, but I love this cover. I just I sort of love the sort of monochromatic nature of it and uh, i don't know it just sort of just always does it for me I, I love the character i think it's cool and it's cheap this is a, this is a this is a kind of a key you can get for cheap because everyone sort of just dismisses this series yeah that's a great one yeah, not too bad i would have used something like that if i had it but i don't so, <laughs> <laughs> so i again say in the modern and went with this reissue of gun hawks I like this uh, oh. Fino cover. It's just, again, it has that kind of similar, you know, he's got guns on him. That's cool. It, it's just a pretty cool image. So it nothing special about this book, nothing key happens that I'm aware of. It's just a cover that I happen to have that I liked. Yeah, I like it. It got hot, I remember. One of the covers for that got hot last year. No idea. <laughs> I just happen to have it. No, I don't know why. And I was like, I don't yep, know why, but it did. <laughs> All right. Well, it's, it's probably Zafino. Like he got hot for a bit there. Everybody wanted those variants that he was doing, and that's true. Know, it, it just happens sometimes. You say that. Uh, who is that? Franco Villa. Uh, Gerardo Zafino. If I'm saying his name right. Oh, Gerardo. Oh, yeah. yeah, I know. Oh, he's great. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah, I like it. He, heavy blacks. Like he uses a lot of blacks. Like I know in a lot of his covers. Yeah, All right, well. and a lot of very manic line, a lot of very manic line work too, which is cool. Since uh, Gil Kane is the guy we keep talking about, uh, I'm going to go with a Gil Kane cover, Kid Colt Outlaw 157. Hmm. Uh, nice. Let's see, uh, the reflections are bad, but you can see they're they put their clothes on sticks, and the outlaws are shooting <laughs> them up, and they're <laughs> him and his sidekick are shirtless, waiting patiently to fire back, I guess. Uh, but just it's one of those. I, I had a little stack of kid, random kid cult books. I don't I don't really know why I had them, but now looking at I flip through them, I was like, this cover just sort of stands out. I love the the foreshadowing and the people in the front and the way the shadows are done and all the and then the very back you can sort of see way back there the dark blue. They're firing their guns. Uh, tell the story. Yeah, I mean it makes me want to read the book, and I can see why these these were popular, especially because I think about my dad. My dad loved western movies, and oh, yeah. I mean. That was that was his that was his thing. We we could watch the same stinking episode of Roy Rogers and Gene Autry <laughs> over and over again. We didn't have cable, so we, whatever came on Saturdays, we'd watch that, and then eventually kung fu movies. But like yeah. this takes me back to the westerns. When I look at these great comics, they're not worth anything, but they're just gorgeous covers. Yeah, once yeah. you get the western bug, it's hard to shake. You know, yeah. I'm trying not to. I got the golden age bug, and that's expensive. So, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's an investment. Yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's true. But that, yeah, you, at least that's the way we try to spin it. We try to spin it for ourselves. Yeah, that, that, way way we, that, 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 that way we can justify. That way we can justify three five hundred thousand dollars sales. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. What is our Mike? What's your third pick, Mike? Last round. Uh, let me see if our oh, audience. cool. I just picked that because it was cool. That you know, it was um just, that a baker? Man, I love the figure work on that, the ripped shirts, the pulp feel of it. You know, it's got so much danger, the snake wrapped around the 
the signpost and the skull on top. It's it's so lurid and and yeah. you know um, you know it, it's just something that you would love to grab as a kid that you know your parents probably would look down on you for. It, it um, pops. It, maybe it's <laughs> yeah. yellow with the red. You know, sometimes it's it's easy to lose sight of how interesting some of this artwork must have been on these golden age covers because it's been so uh, you know derivatives have been made of it so often that it sort of gets watered down but you know there, there's uh i'd imagine back then that was a really powerful image you know i mean i i know a lot of pulp covers and they have some action on them but but not quite like that and i don't even know who the artist is to be honest with you on that i'm looking it up right now okay what's uh Zoom in on the face for me, Peter, if you can. Which one you want? Blue shirt or no shirt? Blue shirt, like the motion going on there. I mean, yeah. check that out. I mean, dang. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's just uh, they're grabbing each other. They're, you know, the, the muscle, muscles are tense. I mean, it's, you know, maybe there's a tangent there where his knife is touching his thumb. But, yeah. You know, yeah. Then again, it was probably done in about, you know, four hours or something. <laughs> you know I mean? If that. Uh, yeah. Unknown unknown cover artist, although interior art is Sam Glansman. Oh, really? Uh, so it could be what Sam Glansman, but I, it. What date? Did uh, that it be? is. This is October nineteen forty-eight. Forty-eight. And Sam Glansman yep. worked in. Wow, that's huh. really interesting. I mean, he worked well into the nineties, I believe, as a as a interior artist. That's the thing. A lot of these golden age, like it's it's such a beast for us to try to figure out like who the artist was. I mean, you have your go tos that everyone knows, but there's so yeah. many gorgeous books like uh, the Airboy I showed in one of those earlier episodes. Like, I, it's sometimes you can't you pull them up and you're like who did the cover, who did the interior, right? I mean, because they didn't really have credits. I think Neil Adams was instrumental in getting artists and writers credited in books. Yeah, or, or maybe yeah. I'm wrong on that with the timeline, but. It wasn't really until Marvel Comics came around that that became a normal thing. Yeah, you, you used to not. Well, I always want to know, movie. like, you don't see signatures. On Sorry, it. go ahead, Chris. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, no. Like, I always want to know who did like the Jumbo and Jungle comics, all those really awesome Good Girl books. That there's no credits for any of those covers. Almost, almost none of them. Right. Yeah. And they're gorgeous, gorgeous, Lost gorgeous cases. Agents. Yeah, Very it's cool. too bad. All right, Morello, what you got? All right, I could not go. I could not go three episodes and not feature one of my favorites. I had to go with the Peanuts book. <laughs> Good old Schultz doing Charlie Brown as a cowboy. I had to do it. Uh, I just I love this whole run, this whole Dell run. They're not expensive. They're like twenty dollars books, thirty dollars books. They're just really simple. There's just no beaten Schultz. I love Peanuts. Uh, Charlie Brown as a cowboy. I couldn't resist. Yeah, I was expecting you to find like Vampirilla in a cowboy hat or something. <laughs> no, see, see, that's it, right? You're like, well, wait a minute. We're going to go three episodes and Mike's not going to be able to choose Red Sonia. He's not going to be able to choose Vampirilla. What is he going to do? <laughs> so, yeah, it's rotten. I went Pete. I did do a Conan book. You that's true. You did Conan in this run, so you, you still stay true. I did. <laughs> I did. I did. And Peanuts. So, I, so that's for Ben C. That one was for Ben. Yeah, I, on the other hand, could not do an X-Men book, I don't think, through this entire three episodes that we've done. But I did find this random variant. I don't even know where I got it or why, but I got this Red Wolf. Ooh. Oh, that's wicked. Ooh, cool. Yeah, it's a Tedesco. That's awesome. It's oh, just an yeah. awesome just image. You got you know, Red Wolf on the horse. You got these guys, these bikers. Again, I don't even know where I got this from. It was probably just a random pick up to save on shipping. I bought off somebody like, well, they got this book too. So we'll get this because it looks cool. <laughs> Is that a motorcycle that flying a through the air? Is that a motorcycle that? flying through the air? Yeah. Yeah. Back in here. <laughs> yeah. This dude got, dude got tossed. <laughs> I love how you say yeah. Oh, yeah. I love how you say yeah like that's a common thing. Like that happens all the time. It's, it's, it's a common thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's a All right, I got my last book. We'll close this out with a, I guess, a golden age all star western, uh, number ninety three. This is another Gil Kane cover. Uh, I do love this. Uh, being from Tennessee, uh, they used to have this place called Iperland. Now it's no longer around, but uh, 
they have the it, it reminds me of the ride called the flume zoom it, zoom it was a log ride where you'd ride in and you shoot down these water tubes uh to ride and that's what these these cowboy twins look like they're doing uh, to me uh it just, it just takes me back to my childhood getting to ride that ride it was always the most fun ride because it's the one you got soaked on when you did it but uh this is great i really do actually like this real cane cover it's, it was really cool i it actually showed up in the same auction i bought that gunfighters i'm actually excited about this one the gunfighters one i was like oh i didn't mean to buy that <laughs> yeah <laughs> so those are great cool but well mike thanks for being there we want to take a moment to show your site because you got some just okay. beautiful art on there um Take us, sir. Take us through. I mean, I love flipping through when we were talking about getting you on the show. Of course, you get to see the the variant that's been out for a week or two now. Uh, but there's yeah, some, you get to see the GI Joe one. Hopefully, the the maybe the the Wolverine's still around. Maybe it's already gone. Uh, a lot of these. variants in the mix. So uh, the GI Joe two seventy three came out uh, at this point, maybe a month ago. Uh, the X twenty three book came out a couple weeks ago. Um, yeah, they're might be gone because I only had uh, a very limited amount of that print run for the X-23. Um, and I'm pretty sure right about now I'm getting ready to announce a, a G.I. Joe 274 uh, cover that I think is going to be, it might even be better than that 273 one. And people really love that one. It's and good. also right about now, I bet you there's going to be some new Vampirella material out and it's going to be presented in a different way I've never done before maybe more like a crowdfunding sort of thing. And with that sort of um, forum or uh, whatever, with that platform, we can sort of play with some things that I normally wouldn't get to play with, with the variants. So I'm really excited to see how, you know, what we can do with that campaign and make it special. And then maybe some uh, incentives that we can create along the way to keep people excited. That's cool. Awesome. Yeah. So uh, I saw it pop up there. There's some of your I'm Star Wars. List of, you're doing westerns. Oh. I'm like, what about this one? I thought I had this. <laughs> Ooh, Jamie Foxx, too. No. <laughs> oh, there you go. There's a web. So yeah, you could have you plugged your own book. Draw that too. book and it was right after the... Yeah, it was right after The Star Wars, that book I did for Dark Horse, and I thought it would be so cool to do something based on Quentin Tarantino's uh, plot that he wrote for that comic. And uh, I just couldn't come to a, a, an agreement with Dynamite on, on like a page rate sort of thing. But I would have loved to have drawn that book. But I'm really happy I got to do a cover. I mean, I was just watching Django the other night. I mean, that's a love that movie. Yeah, it's good stuff. So good. Zorro, Zorro and I go all the way back to the beginning. I mean, that's the first series that I drew. I got to take those out because I have them. When you were talking to us earlier about doing Zorro, I was like, I have those tops like Zorro books and Lady Rod. <laughs> They're in here somewhere. I, just got oh, that's awesome. I love that. And those Star Wars, those Star Wars books you're talking about, that's the one that was the original Lucas script that you did the interiors for. Is that what that is? That's right. The Star Wars. Oh, yeah. That's right. It, it was way different. Han Solo is a big green alien. Um, you know, General Luke Skywalker is an older guy. And, uh, you know, it was like all bits of all nine movies sort of crammed into this one one screenplay that we, we d depicted in, I want to say, seven issues. And uh, it's really one of the, my favorite things I've done in my career, you know. Yeah, it's really cool series. Interiors, it was gorgeous, some of the inside stuff. Ooh, this is oh, your IG? You. Yeah, I just yeah. figured I'd bring up your IG real quick, too, while we are Yeah, yeah, you know, if out. you want to see what I'm doing, it's Mike Made You Studio Everything. That's my website. That's my uh, Instagram. That's my Facebook. And, uh, you know, I, I'm usually posting a couple times a day old stuff on Instagram, new stuff, process. Uh, maybe I'll do a little video here and there. But uh, yeah, one. I, I, I try to keep it busy on social. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I forget you did that rocket run, rocket raccoon little that's, series. That's right. Yeah, hey, a rocket yeah, up here. That was another thing. There he Sad is. Sad rocket. <laughs> that is a hefty glass of whiskey he's got sitting in front of him too. That's just fun. Yeah. <laughs> what? How? To me, that would be a fun book to do. Like just oh, writing character. Yeah. I mean, we talked last episode about cartoony stuff, funny animal almost. So you know, it was it was fun to scratch that edge with Rocket. Very cool. Yeah. Oh, awesome Mike, your book. Yeah. Yeah. X twenty three. That's a big one. Well, great stuff. I love these remarks too. This. 
great. Oh, those are fun to do. Yeah, we draw those right. I draw those right in the book with the oil sharpie pen. When you look at the book, it's real shiny. It looks like a sticker. Yeah, it does look like a sticker. Yeah, they're they're a lot of fun. Uh, you know, I, I'm increasing my repertoire with those as we go with different characters and things. I like need to that. get one of those from you, Mike. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Already made a sale. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you got you got some money coming from my Baby pocket. Yoda. Baby Yoda, that. that's the new one. I think that one will get better over time. Not, you know, the first ones always are a little wonkier. And then once I figure it out, the way I like to think about those remarks, this sounds kind of corny, but it's almost like if you were decorating a cup, the top of a cupcake, like there's like patterns oh, yeah. that you have to, you know, it's not just like drawing out of your head. You have to be, it's almost like you're designing the colors and how they lay on top of each other. Oh, so like a printing. Each other. Yeah, you're kind of learning it. Well, not learning, but you're figuring it out as you go, and it just gets better over time. Because I think your oh, cupcake yeah. analogy is apropos. Because yeah, the first couple ones yeah. are going to be—they're not going to be perfect. But as you get going, you get that rhythm down. Yeah. Very cool. Oh, you know, any of the ones that you do that you don't like, you... <laughs> we will gladly take them. You know, you know if there's something you don't like, you know, don't throw those away. You just send them to me. It's okay. <laughs> I don't mind the bad ones. <laughs> Yeah, you can't mess up on those remarks, you know, because no. sometimes those books yeah. are expensive. Yeah. So you got to, right. I don't know, I've never met one up yet for some reason. <laughs> Humble brag. <laughs> for, for some reason. For some reason. Because yeah. you're good at what you do. Because <laughs> you're very good, I think that's probably yeah. the answer that you don't want to say. <laughs> I don't have a shame in saying it. You're good at what you do. That's why you don't mess them up. You are very good at what you do. There's no oh, doubt about you. that. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you so thank much. Thank you for, for providing being with many us. years of great art for us. Oh, yeah. I, thank you. I, it's 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 a pleasure, and I couldn't be happier to be doing what I'm doing. And I can't. I I really excited for what I got in the pipeline. Big big stuff. You know, uh, interior stuff, creator own stuff, my own Marvel store variants, DC covers variants. It should be kind of be teased right about now. So uh, it's an exciting time. Awesome. Wow. That's great. We can't wait. Can't wait to see all of it. It's going to be great. Cool. Yeah. Hey, it's good talking to all you guys. You guys are fun to talk to. And oh. uh, like I told you in the other episodes, I love following your content, and uh, I love that you guys are evolving and expanding into sort of new directions. And I'm interested in all of it. Very cool. Thank, thank you, you so much. We appreciate the support. Really, thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, as always, guys, this is Three Comic Money, uh, ComicBookInvest.com. You can pick, watch the videos on Tales from the Flip Side, CBSI. Uh, check out the website. <laughs> check out Mike Mayhew Studio on Instagram and on his website. Uh, thank you. To, hopefully you enjoyed this three-part series. Hopefully we're going to be getting some more artists and more creators and more people involved in doing this show. And hopefully you like it. Uh, watch our show. Uh, if you don't, okay. But I like please, it. We like it. And we enjoy doing it. We'll probably and, do and, it whether or not there's a th fourth person here with us. So uh, thanks, guys. And special thanks to, to Mike Mayhew for uh, for spending yeah, so much time with us. We really appreciate your time and, and your and your support, and uh, and we look forward to supporting you back. Thanks very oh, much. Thank you, guys. I had fun all three episodes. This was great. Awesome. awesome. Cool. All right, guys. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you.